Hi, welcome to lecture 4.1 of the SAGE based course on Monte Carlo methods. This week's topic is on continuous random variables, expectations, data, statistics, arrays, and tuples. So we saw that in last week's material, we saw that a random variable is a mapping from the sample space capital Omega to the set of real numbers R. In other words, it's a numerical value determined by the outcome of the experiment. Right? Um, now let's look at, we looked at discrete random variables last time. So these random variables um, took at most countably many values or um, finitely many values. Um, but now we're going to look at continuous random variable. So this is a different kind of random variable. It still maps the sample space. The little omegas in the capital omega, the outcomes little omega, do get mapped to real numbers, but the mapping is fundamentally different of a different type than that of the discrete random variables. So when a random variable takes on values in the continuum of the real line, we call it a continuous random variable. So the examples for a continuous random variable are the volume of water that fell on the Southern Alps yesterday. That's one way to do it. There's more fancy ways to doing, of doing that as well. Or we could look at the vertical position above sea level in micrometers. Uh, since the original release of a pollen grain at the headwaters of Waimakariri. So if we go to the Waimakariri River, I go to the headwaters in the Alps, release a pollen grain, and simply keep track of the exact vertical position of this pollen grain above sea level as it is flowing through Waimakariri. Well, that's a very complicated uh, random variable that's indexed by time, but it's a continuous random variable nonetheless. Or we could talk about the resting position and degrees of a roulette wheel after a brisk spin when it comes to rest. So all these are examples of continuous random variables. So the way we talk about a continuous random variable is via its probability density function, okay, or PDF. A random variable capital X with distribution function capital F is called continuous if there exists a piecewise continuous function little f called the probability density function little f of x such that for any real numbers a less than b the probability of the random variable x being more than a and less than or equal to b is given by the distribution function at b minus the distribution function at a and that is given by the integral from little a to little b of f of x dx. Okay? So all this is saying is that the probability that the random variable capital X is between two numbers a and b is nothing but the difference of the distribution functions and that's given by the integral of the density between a and b. Okay, the PDF or little f is the density, probability density function. The following hold for a continuous random variable x with PDF little f. The first uh, property is for any real number x, the probability that the random variable capital X is equal to this uh, real number little x is zero. Okay, so what that says is that the ra continuous random variable capital X with PDF little f um, given by this integral simply will give zero probability of the random variable taking a particular value little x. So that is, that is basically because the integral from x to x of any density is zero. Okay. So consequentially for any um, real numbers a less than or equal to b the probability that x is between a and b strictly between a and b or strictly more than a and less than or equal to b or strictly greater than or equal to a and less than or equal to b or is strictly greater than or equal to a but strictly less than b 
all these things where the where the inequalities and the equalities are simply uh, permuted around doesn't matter. So they are all the same because what happens at one point does not matter for a continuous random variable in terms of determining its probability. Okay, that's what comes out of this way of defining probability with the density as an integral. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, except possibly at finitely many points where the continuous pieces of the PDF come together, um, little f of x is d by dx of capital F of x. Okay, so capital F of x is the distribution function, right? The, the antiderivative. And of course, little f must satisfy the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity if little f of x dx should be the probability that the random variable takes any real number, which should be just one. Right. So now I strongly recommend that you watch the Khan Academy movie about the probability density functions to warm up um, to the meaning behind the maths above, uh, at least from Khan's point of view. It's to consider the continuous random variable capital Y that measures the exact amount of rain tomorrow in inches. And then we think of the probability space, capital omega, the sigma algebra F, and the probability um, map capital P, underpinning this random variable capital Y that's measuring the exact amount of rain tomorrow in inches from omega to Y. Um, here the sample space range or the support of the random variable Y is denoted by um, the bold Y. Okay, um, and it's now going to be any non-negative number. Okay, so I'll just start this video for you. It's 10 minutes long, so you should watch it on your own time. Okay, so now let's look at the uniform 0, 1 random variable. So this is um, a continuous random variable with a probability density function or PDF that takes the value 1 if x is in the unit interval 0, 1 and it takes the value 0 if x is not in the unit interval 0, 1. So formally the PDF of the uniform 0, 1 random variable is written like this. We say that f of little f of x is the indicator function that x falls in the interval 0, 1. That's what this indicator function is. We've seen this before in the last week. So what is the meaning of this? This is nothing but um, f of x takes the value 1 if x is between 0 and 1, inclusive of the endpoints, and it takes the value 0 otherwise. And the distribution function, or the cumulative distribution function, is capital F of x for the uniform 0, 1 random variable. And what is capital F of x? Well, it's just always defined as um, the probability that the random variable capital X is less than or equal to the real number little x. And that is given for a continuous random variable by the integral from negative infinity to little x of the probability density function f of y dy. Okay, so this f of y is really the same as this f of x. We simply change the, uh, the variable um, inside to y because we don't want it to be confused with this um, um, upper limit of the integration x. Okay, um, so capital F of x uh, is simply going to be 0 if x is less than 0 because that's just coming from integrating the 0 constant 0 function to the left of uh, 0 and it's going to be the value x if x is between 0 and 1 that comes from integrating a flat line so you have a linearly growing integral and it's going to be the value 1 if x is greater than 1 because nothing nothing changes so you stay constantly at 1. So. The distribution function is nothing but the identity map in 0, 1. That means it takes numbers in 0, 1 and leaves it unchanged. Okay, so if x is between 0 and 1, it leaves it unchanged. So with, inside 0, 1, it is the identity map. So for values less than 0, the distribution function capital F of x is 0, and for values greater than 1, it is 1, so this blue line will continue like this if I drew the picture further. And within the interval 0, 1, it maps x to itself. So it is the identity uh, map. So here we have the probability distribution function. So it takes the value again 1 between 0, 1, and if I go outside 
um, this interval, then the blue line will drop to zero. Okay, uh, it's not shown in this picture. And now we have the inverse as well, so we can look at the f inverse of u, the inverse image of f, capital F, given by f to the power of minus one of u, is simply um, identical, except the, the x and y axes get changed around for the inverse distribution function. The uniform 0, 1 random variable is uh, called the fundamental model. Uh, you'll see why this is the case in the SQL. Uh, mainly it is because we can get all other random variables as transformations of the uniform 0, 1 random variable. So that's why it's called the fundamental model. The uniform 0, 1 distribution comes from the uniform a, B family. So this is a more general family of random variables. So uniform 0, 1, we already specify what the uh, bounds of the um, random variable are. You know, uh, the lower bound is 0, the upper bound is 1, so it's uniformly distributed in the unit interval. But we can generalize that and say that uh, what if the lower bound is A and the upper bound is B, where A and B are real numbers such that A is less than B. Then for any A, B, where A is less than B and real numbers, we get a uniform A, B family, parametric A, B, parametric family of random variables. And that's the PDF of the uniform A, B family. So here f of x is the indicator function of the interval a, b of x, which is 1 over b minus a if x is between a and b and 0 otherwise. So this is saying that uh, if x is a uniform a, b random variable, then all x that lies between a and b are equally probable. Um, the uniform 0, 1 random variable is the member of the family where a is 0 and b is 1, right? So we've just generalized that uh, uniform 0, 1. So let's look at the PDF, CDF, and the inverse CDF for the uniform uh, random variable where a is minus 1 and b is 1. Okay, so then clearly the PDF is going to be 1 over b minus a, so b is 1 and a is minus 1, so this is 1 over 1 minus minus 1, which is 1 over 2, or 0.5. So that's why this blue line, the PDF of the uniform minus 1, 1 random variable, is at half. Okay, so at bet between the interval minus 1 and 1, it takes the value half, and of course outside this interval it'll take the value 0. The distribution function capital F of the uniform minus 1, 1 random variable is again a linear function. Okay, So this one um, is coming from the integral of the line um, 1 half. And the inverse distribution function, once again, is mapping points between minus 1 and 1 uh, linearly to 0, 1. Okay? So SAGE is a function for simulating samples from a uniform AB distribution. We'll learn more about this later in the course, but for now let's just um, try this. So if I call this built-in function uniform minus 1, 1, let's see what happens. Uh, I get a number, and this number is negative 0 0.88853. Let's try it again. I get another number, which is negative 0 0.408. Uh, now I get a positive number that's less than 1. So I'm basically going to get numbers uniformly at random between minus 1 and 1 if I call this um, built-in function. Okay. So if you're um, curious, you should... Um, try to change this to say minus 10 and I don't know 120 so it's some uniform a b random variable a is minus 10 and b is 120 and I should just get a number somewhere in that interval uniformly at random if I try evaluating this and that's what seems to be happening great now let's take a brief break pause the video and go back upstairs and review um, the ideas and please watch this video if you haven't it's a really nice video that uh, conveys an intuitive understanding of the continuous random variable uh, example uh, that's measured as exact amount of rain tomorrow in inches from Khan Academy and we will come back in the next video and talk about expectations
Tchau.